Hey yo, welcome to the wonderful world of Hunger Heat. I'm not a classically trained chef, but I am a self-taught home cook. I have studied under several television chefs. I have a PhD from YouTube University and a black belt in Google Food. I love to cook. The only thing I love more than cooking is my wife, the sensational Shelly Eat Steak, aka The Warden. Together we host who we like to call the Friday Night Feast. And this happens every Friday night, 6.30 Central. We'll cook up an entree, maybe a couple of snacks, show you how to do it, then we'll spend the rest of the evening just chewing the fat with all of our friends in the Hungry Horde. We hope you can tune in sometime. We'd love to have you over from dinner. Today's video is another recipe. We're going to do a tuna fish casserole pot pie, y'all. I'm really excited about it. You see all the stuff we got here. Well, I just got there. I'm gloved up because I don't know how I am with jalapenos. So we chopped up some jalapenos, onions, mushrooms, and then we have some uh, mozzarella cheese. Yeah. To so, start building everything. Yeah, tell them what we got, babe. So we're calling it our tuna casserole pot pie, but I know not everybody likes tuna. So I'm also going to show you how to do it with chicken. So canned chicken. So you are going to see both versions. We're going to taste both versions and give our final okay on which version we like the, the best. <laughs> right. And what you're going to need to start off, now I am using my 8-ounce ramekins. Yes. Thank you, dear. And we're going to make our fathead dough. I mean, I say ours, but it's... This, it's our version. <laughs> well, and I, I don't mean, I, it's technically not even a version. So what you're going to need for the fathead dough, and I'll put all the recipe down below. And this, as a, just kind of a heads up, this was our September channel member cook along. They requested something seafood and specifically something with canned tuna because they get so much canned tuna and they don't know what to do with it other than just like... To the salad, right? And so, uh, the if you're interested in our monthly cook along, you could just hit that join button right there, and what that will give you access to is once a month we meet on a Saturday evening for our cook along. I put out a recipe. You get a special video that only members have access to a month before everybody else. And you also get a printable recipe card. And then we just meet and you could cook along with us. Some people just like to watch everybody else cooking. You decide what you want to do on that monthly cook along. And then from there, you also get other perks. So when you hit that join button, it'll tell you the different perks you could sign up for depending on the level. So I hope you join us as I love it. We look forward to it every month. Yes, I love the Friday Night Feast, but being able to actually see most of our channel members and just kind of get more one-on-one -on -one with them. It's more intimate. Yes, it's like the best thing ever. It's almost like having a uh, potluck there at the house. Yeah, exactly. So, we're going to start off with our fathead dough. The fathead dough is one and a half cups of mozzarella. Now, you can use shredded mozzarella. We buy the big cubes. Or the big blocks, rather. A 32-ounce block. And we just cube it up. And so you want one and a half cups, plus, uh, which is 12 ounces, plus two ounces of cream cheese. We'll heat that up in the microwave. I start at one minute, and then I keep stirring and do it 30 seconds until it's really nice and pliable. You'll add a third a cup of coconut flour, and then one room temperature egg. That's what you need for the fathead dough, which is going to be our crust. And then for our filling, so we have both here our chicken and our tuna. Now, I like the Wild Planet albacore tuna, but you get what you like. With the albacore tuna, we are going to season it with our seafood seasoning. So this is something we just started making, and a couple people have tried it so far. And said that they really like it. So that was we, also a viewer member request on that too. Right. And so we that's one of the benefits of our channel members is they kind of get heads up on new release spices and some of them even get to try spices we might be developing. And so that's what we're gonna use for the tuna. Now for the chicken, we're gonna use our tried and true pork and poultry rub. That's like the best. 
and you're going to need 10 ounces of either tuna or chicken, whichever one you want. And then for the main filling, you're also going to want some more cream cheese. And then we're also doing jalapenos, onion, and mushrooms. And, and what you're wondering what I'm doing here, I kept seeing large pieces we didn't actually chop up enough, so I'm just breaking them up into the bowl. Uh, and no, then I've no. also got some fresh diced or minced garlic. Right. And that's going to be part of the filling along with the um, tuna and chicken. And plus, I have some Gruyere cheese. So we'll be dicing that up or you can find um, shredded Gruyere cheese and add that as well, however you prefer. But we'll show you as we get that going. So we're going to start off with microwaving this and getting that ready. And then we'll show you once we get that rolled out. Okay, we've melted the mozzarella and the cream cheese. So while it's still hot, this the only thing with the fat head dough is you do have to work quite swiftly because once it cools down, then you gotta get it hot again. So now I'm gonna add a third cup of the coconut flour. And I'm going to mix this in. Ooh. Right. And then I have my egg here that we will use. And then you'll see here I've got the parchment paper down. So you want to have parchment paper or you could do saran wrap. Um, you know, whatever you prefer because we're going to roll this out pretty thin. And then once it's rolled out thin, then we will uh, slice it to make the... Individual crust. Yeah. All right. Put this in here. Try to mix that flour in before I start doing the egg. I thought I had a napkin here. I'm sorry. No, you're good. There you go. Thank you, dear. Do that egg yolk. Then this is really the hardest part is mixing this here. Pull this over because it keeps uh, walking on me. Yeah. A little bit of splits there. Okay. Just hold it there. Have we also done this in the mixer before? Mm -hmm. With the, the hook? Oh, yeah, you could do that way as well. Might be easier. <laughs> and your dough should turn kind of a light yellow. Right now it's still pretty uh, orangey. This seems to be a lot more labor in this. Yeah, this is going to be the hardest part, y'all. And you want to go ahead and get your oven preheated to 400 degrees. And then what we're going to do in our individual pot pies, we're going to cook the bottom part just for a couple minutes. Kind of like, you know, sometimes when you bake a pie, you cook the crust, the bottom crust first for a little bit so that it's cook it in there, and then when we add the filling, it's not going to soak up all of the filling to get soggy. I think this is almost done. That's looking really good. Yeah. I'm y'all, I'm really excited to see how this turns out at the very end. Me too, because it's been a while since I've had like a pot pie. Right. And just make sure you get the whole bottom of your bowl is kind of folded in. Probably get a better, a bigger spoon. I've got next the biggest time. one in there, I thought. All right. That's all right. 
Well, we got that giant serving spoon. I should yeah. have gave you that, I guess. Oh, well. You know what I was just thinking of, though? No. Instead of the ramekins, we should have got those little foil pans, the little individual ones. Oh. And then we could do, like, remember how Carl said he does his pot pies. He turns them upside down on his plate and pulls the pan off, and then he just eats it. Well, I mean, we might still be I don't able know if to do that. I don't know if it'll come out. We may need to eat it out of the ramekins, but I was thinking. Oh. Well, I guess we'll... We'll find out. See what happens. I don't know. I just had a flashback to his stories. Right. I miss him. Me too. Okay. So lift this piece up. I've got two pieces here. And kind of in the middle. Make sure I get all of this out of here. I push it down there. And then... in there okay we gotta work fast because we got a fan going and the fan is fighting us it's cooling everything down so i'm gonna first go in and try to push it now for me you have to stand up i like to stand up i'm not a sit cooker i just kind of do it at different angles You know, I'm just trying to work fast. And you want to try to make it a rectangle. Okay, I've got it rolled out. We want to save half for the top and half for the filling. So to get the tops, all I'm doing is using my ramekin to make these circles, which will be the top crust. Let me kind of lay them like that. Three, four, five, and let's do one more down here. That should be six. Now we're not going to let these little bits go to waste. We're definitely going to use that. We will i to smash it in here. So what I'm doing is taking part of the dough, and if you need to, if it gets too cold, then you're going to have to probably just microwave it for like 15, 30 seconds, something like that. Okay. And then I've just kind of Pushing it in and working it, the crust together. Once it's all cooked, it's not going to be a big deal here. That's the beauty of this uh, fathead dough is it's pliable like that. And, you you know, you can do it whatever you need to with it. Mm-hmm. Very versatile. Okay. And the inside doesn't have to be you know, pretty. Okay. Just kind of mostly get it done. And then I'm just putting them on a cooking sheet so that then we can cook them in the oven. And all at the okay. same time. Okay, I've got my oven preheated to 400. And then I've got all of my ramekins filled, and I'm going to put it in here, and I'm just going to do it for five minutes. All right, in a hot skillet, we're going to start, I've already got about a tablespoon or so of some bacon grease, and then we're going to add the onion. And this is why I kept my uh, hands gloved. So I can sweep all these through. I'm going to just stir this up. We'll cook it for a couple minutes. Oh, man, that smells good. The pan's not all the way on the burner. I'll see the ring. There you go. Perfect. Well, at this one, it, it's a smaller skillet, so oh. you can see the ring. Okay. My bad. But we will cook this for just a couple minutes till the onions start to be translucent. 
Now we're going to add the jalapenos. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to make sure I don't throw my hand up in the way. <laughs> so y'all can still see what's going on here. And then we're going to cook this down. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's add the mushrooms. I see that one little flake is bothering me. Whoops. Oh, all right. We're confetti. We're having a party now. Ooh, this is looking good. Yeah, it does. Now we have this much because we're doing a total of 20 ounces of canned meat, but you know, you could adjust the recipe as needed because these are individual pot pies. If you are only doing like one or two, then you know, decrease accordingly. That's a good thing about this recipe. You make however many you need. So I'm gonna let this go for a couple more minutes. So here's what they look like, and you should see a little browning at the edges. And at least, I mean, we're not cooking it all the way through, just enough to start cooking it. And then we're gonna put the filling in, and then we'll finish in the oven. So I'm just gonna pull these out, let them rest while I work on the filling. It has been, oh, about seven or eight minutes. And I feel like this is nice and you want it tender. And since we're doing two different versions, so I'm going to be putting half and half. So I've got my bowl ready. And I will just put half of this mixture into the bowl. And I'll put it in my other bowl. And then we're ready to start making our pot pie filling. We are ready to do the filling. So we have cooked that mushroom, onion, jalapeno, and garlic mixture. That's all in here. And again, we're splitting it because we're gonna do chicken and we're doing the tuna. And then also what you're gonna need is some cream cheese. And then what Heath is doing is he's actually got the Gruyere cheese and he's cubing it up. I'm making confetti out of it and somebody mm. gets a steal from me. And that's going to be part of the filling plus some cream cheese. So we want to do about two ounces of cream cheese for each one. So I'm going to put that in here. And just kind of break this up a little. And it should, you know, already the cream cheese has been softened from being out this whole time, but also the hot veggies will help melt that out. And then for the tuna one, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of our seafood seasoning. There we go. And that does, of course, have Redmond's real salt. And then I'm just gonna open up these cans. You here if you want. Can I put this right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. And then is this my yeah, cheese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one first bowl, yes. Okay. I just don't want to get get you. Oh, right. I don't want to. Well, there's that pastry knife too. You scoop it up with. Oh, that's true. That thing is so versatile, y'all. If you don't have one, I would recommend it. Cause look, see how she did all that, and you got mm -hmm. a couple more right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great scooper. And what I usually do too, like when we're doing like vegetables and stuff like that, I will take the cutting board and hang it off the, uh, I'll hang it off the countertop on just a touch and put the trash can right here. So if anything does fall, it at least will fall into the trash, not onto the floor. Yeah. And then we Little did- lazy guy pro tip. And then we did drain these. So make sure you do drain your cans of tuna or chicken. All the juice as much as possible. Yeah. I guess you just absolutely love that briny flavor that's with it. Right. And then I'm just kind of breaking up this um, albacore tuna. It's pretty chunky. And the only thing is we're going to have to, when we go to load these and put them in the oven, I have to remember which one's which. <laughs> oh, I already got it. All oh. the blue ones oh, okay. are going to be tuna because okay. the they're the sea. Yeah, right. 
blue for the C. And these are still my lids, y'all. Yeah. And then the other colors, which are yellow, orange, and white, is going to be chicken. I'm so excited about these. I am too. We've I been talking you, about doing this for a while. Yeah, I hope you all are excited, and I hope all of you try this recipe. I always get so excited and happy when people try the recipes and talk about how good it was. Just makes my day, y'all. Okay, just going to mix this all together. Okay, you ready for the chicken to go in, too? Yeah. That I'm just gonna say that's another reason why I'm so gloved up. I just reach in here and do it. And plus, these are huge chunks. I'm just gonna break them up too. Yeah. Yep. And then I've got the cream cheese over here. All right. There, I can do that with my glove too, if you like. Yeah. Well, I don't want to lose any of them. Good. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. Cool. And then we will just combine this, and we will show y'all what it looks like once it's all been combined. So we got this all mixed together. Now I did put more cream cheese, so you make it as creamy as you like it. The full recipe is down below. And then with our ramekins, just gonna go in and fill it. And I'm gonna push it in there as I fill. Cause Ooh, I like nice. a good amount of filling. I see the chunky tomatoes. tomatoes. I'm sorry, the onion. What's wrong with you, Heath? And then once it's filled, you just grab your little lid. And then I'm just going to kind of push that in here. Kind of crimp it along the edges. There we go. Now, Chef, mm -hmm. do we want these brilliant, uh, filled over, or do you want it level? It's up to you. Okay. You do what you want, and then just grab a lid and put it on there. Okay, well, I got a better idea on that part, though, because we're trying to fill all three of these, right? Yeah. Let me fill them first, so mm. I can distribute the stuff equally, and then I'll cap them. Oh, well, Because once smart. it's capped, I can't refill it, you know? That's true. Look at that. So smart. It's not just a hat holder. No, it is certainly not. It's a danger that's, maker. That's why the, the channel is called Hungry Heath. All right, there's my tuna one. And let me, and I think I will have extra filling still. That's fine. We just eat it like that. It is really good. Like, we ta tasted it just before we've actually cooked it. And just so we make sure. Yeah, you have to make sure. You got to taste as you can. I, I told her it needs to be good as tacos. I'm not sure about the tacos. I think everything deserves to be a taco. Yeah. He's definitely in the taco camp, y'all. What about you? It's the perfect delivery method. <laughs> Comment below what you think is the perfect delivery method. Because like old school, what I used to do. Mm -hmm. I would make crunchy tacos, but then I would put a uh, flour tortilla down on my plate, lay it flat, mm -hmm. and then eat the taco above it. And whatever fell out of the taco, the crunchy taco, yeah, became a soft taco. Oh, okay. And then I'm just because you gotta put, have goals. Well, yeah. Put my lid on here. Encrypt the side. This one was a little short. That's How are right. yours short, but I'm like doing all three of mine, unless I'm overfilling my bowls, my ramekins. Not you. Well, so I was asking you, what do you think would be the best thing on here? I mean, yeah, we'll just see what, what, how each thing turns out, right? This way here, no chicken left behind. That's true. I mean, I guess I could have filled mine a little bit better. I don't know about that, or did you make more? Because I would imagine, like everything else, you did it perfect. That's why you're amazing. Oh, yeah? You're so sweet. If I didn't think you were good enough, I wouldn't have married you. Oh. oh. I'm so fortunate. I've been like, kick the, you know, hit the bricks. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Sorry, I didn't hear you. your phone's breaking up. Mm-hmm. All right, let me go in and... And then you're going to pat that last one down? That would make sense. Why would I do that? I don't know. I guess now it's time to put the cap on it, huh? Yeah. And we still have our oven at 400 degrees. Oh, this one came short. Yeah, some of them did. They weren't perfect circles. Look, I still feel this one. Maybe, what I'm also thinking, maybe uh -huh. we should have got these a little bigger so we could drape over it. Well, yeah. We could have done but that, But live and learn, right? Okay. okay. But ugly food is good food. That's true. And this one just happens to have a vent pipe on it. Let me just put that pipe. in there, inside. Yeah, if you want. It'll take up less room on the counter, though. Yeah. All right. Let me put this in. Well, it is really good, though, y'all. All right. Come let, on, me, let me do this one more time. I'm going to push it down on top here. And. Quality control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I didn't tuck in. I just laid, mm -hmm. left, left, left it on top. Mmm. You know, we could do two. Uh -uh. Wouldn't it be typically, if you're doing regular dough, wouldn't you do an egg wash on this? Yeah. Do we need to do that though? With it uh, being the fathead dough? I don't think you really need to. And then do to. we want to dust it with a little seasoning one more time? Or do you think it's going to be good? I think it's good. Yeah. You know right. me, I'm a little extra. Sometimes uh, she's got to re re rein me in. Right. Like, slow down, Turbo. Okay. So I think these are all good. We're going to put them in the oven. And we're going to go for 15 minutes until the tops are nice and brown. So we've got each on our plate. We're serving it with just a salad. I think that goes great with a pot pie. So I've got my chicken here and my tuna here. So you're doing tuna first. Well, you already had the spoon in it, so I figured why not. Okay. You already Let me helped do me that. out. Oh, you know what I like is the crust yeah. is kind of ballooned up a little bit. Look at the, mm -hmm. ooh, look at the mm. cheese pull on it. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. That is, is really good, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That is really good. Oh wow. The flavors are so good, like really uh, developed. All right, I'm gonna cheat. I'm going in for the chicken. Oh. And y'all, mm. I was just telling her before we hit record, there's so many possibilities with this recipe. So many different ways we can fill it. Mm -hmm. But I need a knife. Wow, that that tuna. It's so good. Oh, really, really good. You know what would almost be good to you to eat with this? If we had sporks. I mean, I've seen those ones that are actually serrated like the knife, but it's a spoon. I thought I could do, do one utensil. Okay. And yeah, these mm -hmm. are fresh out of the oven, so yeah. they're still hot. I just still steam coming off of them. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go in with the chicken. Yes. Since you're already there. Mm -hmm. I haven't bite yet. See, you got to bite before me, cheater. Mmm. Mm. That chicken. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think the pork and poultry mm -hmm. is what really sets it apart and gives it such a great flavor. Mmm. This is money. Oh my gosh. That is really good. Which one is your favorite? Honestly, I think the tuna fish. That's going to be a old bite though. Look at that. Because it's so different, right? Yes. Mm. I was thinking too, you know how in the past we uh, bought the canned salmon and made the salmon cakes? Oh yeah. We could do it with this too though. Exactly. 
I think. Or even shrimp in this, or um, the, that that uh, frozen crawfish. Anything would work, actually. Wow. Well, tell us what your ideas would mm -hmm. be. What would you fill the pot pie with? And if you make this, please leave us a comment and make sure you join the Hungry Horde Facebook group. And then it's called Hungry Horde Headquarters. And that's because he has an, uh, an attraction for alliteration. That's why it's the Friday Night Feast. Mm-hmm. Hungry Heath. Hungry Horde. So, join the group and then share your photos so that everybody can ooh and ah at your wonderful meals. And for those of you all that don't know, we take those photos and we put them every... We, we collect them and then every Friday before we go live for the Friday Night Feast, we make that our trailer and show y'all off. Mm -hmm. We have so many outstanding cooks in the Horde. Yes. We love y'all so much. And we get so much inspiration from viewing those pictures. Y'all got to keep doing that, please. Because y'all really do inspire us. Yeah, we love that. So please share your meals, your uh, creations. Yes. In our Facebook group. We would really appreciate that y'all. Because seriously, y'all have some real talent. I know. And it, it have Man. your... Invite your friends yes. and stuff. If there's any friends, maybe even if they're not keto, but they enjoy cooking, they can yeah. ha join, have them come to our group, and then they can see, especially if you have someone who is skeptical, skept skeptical, skeptical of keto, or is somebody's like carnivore, they're like, oh, it's just, I don't know. There's just just not a lot bad of bad diet. Yeah, well, if they're just like, they're, I just don't know of what I could cook. Like, I'm just going to be eating butter and bacon. Right. Invite them to our Facebook group, and they can see so many wonderful, delicious meals on a daily basis. Yes. And inspire them to be like, oh, wow, keto really has lots of great options. Like, okay, there are a lot of delicious foods I can eat on keto. And I, I, this is one of them. I get a pot pie. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you gave it a thumbs up because you love it so much. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And then the bell notification. Yes. And make sure you uh, click the subscribe button too. Because we have content like this coming out all the time. Also... Every Friday night, 6.30 Central, we go live for the Friday night feast. Cook up an entree, maybe a couple little snacks, show y'all how to do it. Then we spend the rest of the evening just chewing the fat with all of our friends in the Hungry Horde. We hope y'all can tune in sometime. We'd love to have you over for dinner. Yes. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. And stay tuned to see all of our channel members who inspired us to create this dish. Thank y'all so much again. We appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you, y'all. Bye. Bye.